Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be exploring the Image Gallery block, which is part of our Key Blocks for Gutenberg plugin. Right now, we're on a page showcasing different examples of how the Image Gallery can be used. This, of course, is by no means an exhaustive list, but it should give you an idea of the things you can do with this widget. The galleries you create can be full width or box, with spaces between images that you can adjust. You can pick the number of columns and how many images will be shown, as well as introduce hover effects. And that's just the basics. But we are here to get a more in-depth look at this block, so let's go to the back end. You're going to need a page or post where you plan to add your gallery, and this is going to be mine. Once you're on the page, you can click on this plus symbol to open the block selection. You'll see all the blocks your site has here. This includes everything you get with Gutenberg itself, as well as the key blocks collection and anything else you may have added. You can easily tell the key blocks apart by the red icons. Now you can browse through this selection to find your block, then drag it over to the page to insert it. However, you can also insert the block from within the page. Let me close this. Within the page, you'll see this plus sign button. Click on it and it opens the block selection. It includes a search function if the block you want isn't immediately shown below. However, mine is. We can see the image gallery right here. So I'll just click on it to add. There. This is what the image gallery block looks like when it's initially added to the page. There are three images shown across three columns, and these are some of the basic content things you can change. You do that within this tab, Content. Then you can hop down to the Number of Columns option to set how many you want to have. My gallery is going to have five columns. There. We can see how the space has changed. And as I started out with three dummy images and the new columns are entirely empty, the next thing I want to do is add my own content. So I'll just click on this little pencil in the gallery field to pick the images that will be displayed in my gallery. I'm going to select the first one. Holding down the shift key on my keyboard, I'll select the last image and then everything between the two will be marked as well. Then just press the select button. And there we go. The images are displayed in my gallery on the page. A quick note about the images. The ones you use should have the same or at least similar dimensions to keep your gallery looking neat and balanced. Alright, the next thing we can do is enable custom links. This option is disabled by default, but if we toggle this switch, then we'll get a few additional options, which we can use to set links that will be applied to our gallery images. As you can see from this note under the Custom Links field, you need to enter the URLs for the links you want to use by listing them in this field and making sure to separate them with commas. Please note that the links are applied sequentially. So the first link applies to the first image in the gallery, the second one to the second, and so on. If you enter just one link, it will be applied only to the first image, all the others will remain unlinked. So, if, for example, you want the whole gallery to be linked to the same URL, you need to enter as many copies of that URL as there are images in the gallery. After that, you can use the Custom Links Target option to set whether the links will open in the same window or a new one. The default setting has the link opening in a new window. Okay, as I don't plan on using links in my gallery, I'll simply disable this option again. After that, we have the Enable Lightbox pop-up option. As you can see, it's enabled by default, and it allows us to click on an image and have it displayed in a larger size with an overlay covering the rest of the screen. Let me show you. I just need to update first, as this doesn't work from the back end. Then I'll view my page in a new tab. Ok, there it is. It just has the gallery. And when I hover over any of the images in the gallery, we can see the cursor turn into a pointer, meaning the image is clickable. And when I do actually click on it, the image is displayed as the focal point on the screen, with this shaded overlay helping to keep it as the main attraction. Visitors can then flick through the gallery images in the lightbox view, or they can exit by clicking here. Ok, I'll return to the setup in the backend. 
So we covered the enable live box pop-up option as well as the number of columns option. That brings us to the space between items option. With it, we can change how far apart or close together the images in the gallery will be. I'm going to set zero for mine and that will eliminate any gaps. So the images abut on one another. Following that, we have the columns responsive option. It allows us to pick how many columns would be displayed on a range of smaller screen sizes. You can stick with predefined if you don't want to fiddle with the settings here. It's coded to look good and save you the bother. However, if you prefer, you can pick custom and then manually set the number of columns you want for each range of screen widths. I'm going to use these settings so we can go through them together. So the first range of screen widths covers laptops. And for that one, I'll set 5. The same number that I have on desktop screens as they are both pretty wide. Then for slightly narrower screens typical of MacBooks, I'll set 5 again. The size is more than enough to keep things visible. Following that, the landscape orientation on tablets, I'll set 3. Okay. For portrait orientation on tablets, I'll put 2. Finally, for the landscape orientation on mobile, I'll set 1. And the same for the portrait orientation on mobile. There, done. After that, we have the image hover option. This allows us to set an effect that would appear when we hover over an image. By default, it's set to none, but we can replace that with any of these varied settings. For example, zoom, when we hover, creates this gentle zoom in effect for the images. And if you're using the zoom effect, you can set the image hover zoom origin. By default, it's set in the center, but you also have the option of selecting the top, which looks like this, or bottom, which looks like this. Then left, you can see how each different setting shifts the zoom focus. Finally, there's also right, and it looks like this. Okay, that was a way of further specifying what you want the zoom hover effect to look like. But besides the plain zoom, we also have the zoom out effect. Visually, that one takes us away from the image rather than draws us closer to it. But in essence, this is very similar to the plain zoom effect, as you get the zoom origin option with both settings. And it offers the same selection in the drop down menu. There's no need to go over it again, as we've already seen how it works. Rather, let's look at the other available image hover effects. The next one in line is move, and with that one, when we hover, the image shifts to the side. Then there's the caption info box. For this one, you need to have captions for each image. You'd add that within your media library. There's a caption field in the options there. Once you add it and hover, you'd get something like this. I set this dummy text on my first image just so we can see what the hover effect would look like. Besides showing the caption in the info box, we can show it in the middle of an image. Then the image will be covered by an overlay and the caption text will be displayed in the center of it. That brings us to the last possible setting here, the caption follow info. With that one, hovering over an image reveals a box with the caption that follows the cursor. So that's one more way for you to display any accompanying text for your images. However, I don't plan on using any effects in my gallery. It's just going to be a simple band of images. So I'll switch this to none. All right. After that, we have the advanced section with the additional CSS classes option. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to it when creating CSS that would style the gallery. That's all for the first tab. Moving on to the next one, style. The first option here is for setting the image border radius. It allows us to curve the corners of the images. Let me show you. By increasing the value, I can make the images rounder. And if my images weren't as tall, I could even use the radius to make them circle shaped. I'm just throwing that out as an idea, but I don't want to use a radius right now, so I'll simply clear this. The next option is for setting the overlay color. If you'd like an overlay for your gallery, you can set whichever color you like here, like so. And you can adjust the degree of transparency you want by dragging this slider here. Okay, let me clear this. 
The option after that, overlay hover color, is somewhat similar. Again, you can set any color you like, and when you hover, you'll be able to see it. Unless you want total coverage as we have right now, you can adjust the transparency to keep your image visible even with a hover overlay. I'm going to use this for my gallery by manually entering a hex code. I'll click here to make the field editable and then type in the code for the color I want. There. Now when I hover, my images only get a bit shaded. They are still clearly visible, but there is this subtle change on hover to make it a touch more interesting. Alright. Under this, we can see the advanced section again. The same option is here too, and it doesn't matter if you use it from the content tab or the style tab, the result will be the same. Okay. Last but not least, we have one more tab in the settings, advanced. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act. For example, there are responsiveness and motion effect settings here. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to this particular block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. That brings us to the end of this video. I created my gallery and in doing so I covered all the relevant options you'd need to create your own gallery using this block. As you've seen, the options are all pretty straightforward and easy to use, and it can be the work of moments to set up a gallery on any page or post you like. I created one with only a handful of images, but you can be as minimalist or as extravagant as you like. This is all down to your preference and what works for your business niche. Ultimately, we hope you found this tutorial on the image gallery block useful and that you will be trying it out, as well as the other blocks in the key blocks for Gutenberg collection, shortly. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.